The mission of Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries is to fulfill God's purpose and to extend His kingdom to birth a people of purpose, passion, and power for the transformation of the world. People that are committed to God, that celebrate one another, and cultivate their community. Do you need prayer? Do you desire someone to stand with you and agree with you? Look no further. We have I Prayer available for you on Sunday between 9 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Our elders and ministers are there for anyone in need. You can dial in or connect via Zoom. The dial-in number is on this flyer, and the Zoom link is posted in the description of the live broadcast. Next Sunday at 9 a.m., meet us right here in the parking lot of KLCM for another Park and Praise service. We want everyone who can to come and let's worship God together. Attention women, please join us tomorrow for the Monday Ministry Moment. We are looking for all the women of KLCM, female friends, and followers to join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. Motivational speaker Frida Doxy will be delivering a word from the Lord that you don't want to miss. Please check our KLCM Facebook page for the meeting link. Are you up early in the mornings? Then please join the KLCM prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. and be led in prayer by our very own Apostle Sterling Porter. All you need to do is dial in to the conference call number and enter the access code. The number is 712-770-4010 and the access code is 645162. Please join us for our Our Power Teaching Series, A Better Way, A Better Life, the study of the book of Hebrews. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., Apostle Sterling Porter will go live right from Facebook. This is a series you don't want to miss. Also at 7 p.m., our children's ministry will have their own teaching live on YouTube with Elder Akio Wilson. To find our YouTube page, go to youtube.com or Open the app and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and look for our logo. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our page. We encourage everyone to join us for an awesome time in God's Word. On Thursday at 7 p.m., Elder Ralph Wilson will go live on Zoom for our youth Bible study. The Zoom link will be posted on our Facebook page. This is primarily for the 13 to 18 year old age group. We ask that all adults, unless you're a parent of one of our teens, not to join the live stream. We want to ensure that our teens have every opportunity to interact with their teacher. We appreciate your understanding. Through the month of August, we will continue to have daily check-ins with our KLCM citizens. Check-ins will only take place on Fridays at 7 p.m. We will go live right from our Facebook page. You will continue to receive a word of encouragement as well as a word of prayer. We are looking for all members to plug in and let us know how you're doing. Even though we are not meeting together physically, we still need and are looking for you to be faithful in your tithing offering. We have five ways available for you to give. You can download the Give Plus app, and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries, and follow the instructions. Text to Give is also now available. Just send a text to 304 398-6627 with your giving amount, then hashtag tithe, offering, building, speaker, or pastor, and then click send. It's that easy. Note, if it's your first time, you'll be prompted to create an account. You can also give online at www.kingdomlifecathedral.org and scroll until you see the online giving banner. You can also give via the mail, sending it right to our P.O. Box. That information should include KLCM, P.O. Box 967, Ranson, West Virginia, 25438. And finally, you can bring it to the church and give during our Park and Pray services. Missed the announcements? Don't worry. You can watch the replay of this service or head to our YouTube page and watch the announcements there. Thank you for your attention during the announcements. Remember, it's your moment of time. Live the kingdom life.
We make a muscle in the spirit and we call out the enemy. Satan, you are defeated. You have no power. You are defeated. And my God, you have the power. You have all authority. Say how. We pulled our strongholds. We cancel principalities. Oh, we say oh. Jesus, we praise. Jesus, we praise.
release of might shall arise. Come on, say shift the atmosphere. Do what you need to do, shift it. It's going to take something outside of the normal yet. You got to shift the atmosphere. Prophetically right now, Lord. The enemy is defeated, yes. And Lord God, you are exalted, Lord. We shift the atmosphere, yes, oh Jesus. We shift the atmosphere. Shift the atmosphere.
Hallelujah. He's so excellent. Hallelujah. And we come to praise his great name. Hallelujah. We lift him up. Hallelujah. We love to call on him. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him in this place. Hallelujah, Lord. There's nobody like him. We call him sovereign. Yeah. Oh. See, we Father, when I call your name, we love 
love to call your name. When I call your name. We love to call your name. When I call your name. We love to call your name. When I call your name. And what a beautiful name it is, yeah. What a beautiful name it is. It's the only name with power. It's the only name with power. I love that love. I love to call your name. I call your name. Hallelujah. Now begin to speak that name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 something has to happen every time you call on your name of Jesus. Nobody like him, nobody stronger, nobody bigger, nobody wiser. He's the great I am, Jesus. We love to call you. We love to call you. We love to call your name, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. There's a shifting when you call on him. There's a shifting when you call on him. Come on, come on. You have to self-advocate for yourself. Call on his name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, we need thee every hour. We're thirsty for you, Jesus. We're longing for you, Jesus. Come on, come on, saints. Begin to call on him and watch him do the work. Begin to call on him and watch him do the work that's nothing impossible. I've seen him heal cancer. I've seen him brace the dead. There's nothing impossible. Call on that matchless name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We call on your name. We call on your name. We call on your name, Jesus. We call on your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. So stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Because there's power in the press today.
Father, we thank you for moving in the midst of us this morning. We thank you, Lord God, because you said when we draw nigh to you that you'll draw nigh to us. So, Father, we respond to your presence even now with our hands lifted up before you, Lord, with our hearts open before you, Father God, asking you to take complete control, Lord, as we present ourselves before you, Lord God. Hallelujah. As we avail ourselves before you, O oh God, have that away, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. God, continue to move by your spirit, O oh God. Continue to move by your power, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, to search our heart, God. If there's anything, God, that's not like you that is found there, remove it now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, move, God, over the airways even now. Move in every home even now, God. Move upon every individual now, Father God. Move in every family now, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And we thank you. And we praise you. Hallelujah. The declaration has indeed went out. And I believe that God has indeed moved in Zion this morning. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful time of worship that we have experienced today. And I believe that God has set us up for such a time that he wants to transition us into. I believe that God wants us to go to a place, even the more in his word, that he can continue to transform us. We want to say thank you to RPH. We want to say thank you to the band. We want to say thank you to those that are working behind the scenes that is making everything great today. God bless you and thank you. I want to go ahead and dive into the word on this morning, on this Lord's Day. I'm going to come out of Romans 13, beginning at uh, verse number 11. Again, Romans 13, beginning at verse number 11. And I want to say thank God for Elder Tanya Armstrong who is our ambassador of prayer. And over these last several days and almost weeks now, as I was in preparation for uh, declaring the word today, I said to the Lord, Lord, you have to connect these dots. Show us through your word where you want us to begin. And as Elder Tanya began to lead us on Thursday evening during that powerful time of prayer and intercession, I heard the Lord say these words coming out of Romans 13 verses 11 through 14. I'm going to come out of the uh, good news, a translation version. It reads as follows. You must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment when we will be saved is closer now than when it was when we first believed. The night is nearly over. Day is almost here. Let us stop the things that belong to the dark. And let us take up weapons for fighting in the light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as people who live in the light of day. No orgies or drunkenness, no immorality or indecency, no fighting or jealousy. But take up the weapons of the Lord Jesus Christ and stop paying attention to your sinful nature and satisfying its desires. If I would have a, a topic for today. That would be to wake up and get it. I want you, if you're uh, watching this morning and if you're in the building this morning, to type in or to say out loud, wake up and get it. Wake up and get it. What do I need to get? Where is it? And how did I leave it in the first place? How many of you have become frustrated over these last four to six months because you have left your mask at home? because you have left your mask in the car or because you have just left it and don't know where you have put it. We get frustrated because we left our covering because either we forgot it or wasn't thinking about it in the first place. Or like many of us, we, we, we were running late and couldn't grab everything we needed. There is a fraction of us uh, who have become smart and leave a spare mask in the car just for the times that we forget. Am I the only one that does that or, or is there a witness? Am I the only one that gets frustrated because that mask that I need to go into a store, I don't have on me? According to the CDC, wearing a mask reduces the possibility of transmission of a disease. In this case, the mask represents protection. 
there are still people who struggle with wearing a mask. There are still people who struggle with protection. <laughs> For the sake of time, I'm going to move quickly through this and talk about this spiritually. Many people do not put on the full armor of God because we leave his presence too quickly and don't receive all the instructions that are needed. Consequently, we end up with a disease or an attack because we aren't protected and we're not prepared. We need to learn how to stay in the presence of God long enough to receive the instructions for the covering. There are situations that we are permitted to return to a place to receive what we need. However, there are also situations when we are prohibited from entering a place to receive what was left. We have to understand and know the difference between what is permitted and what is prohibited. Hallelujah. The way that we can discern the difference between the two is by discerning the difference of the seasons. The sons of Issachar could discern the times and the seasons. They knew when to go into battle and when to stand still. But the reason they knew what to do was because they spent time in the presence of God. And many of us don't want to spend enough time with God because there's so many other distractions going on in the world. There are so many other things that pull us away from the presence of God. Lo and behold, when I go into worship, when I go into my uh, private time of prayer and intercession, then my phone goes off. Then my internet begins to, to, to go to a site or, or there's something that distracts me from staying in the presence of God long enough. But may I encourage you this morning for you to spend a little extra time in the presence of God. May I encourage you this morning for you to spend a little extra time with your ears to his lips that you may hear what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's high time. Hallelujah. When it's snowing outside, I cannot reap the harvest that was planted in the field. I am convinced that many believers are stuck in a season because he or she went back to what God prohibited, which caused their acceleration and mobility to be hindered. They're in a season of past successes. They're in a season of past great mountaintop experiences, but they have not yet went to the next level that God's calling them to come to now. I believe the Lord is opening an opportunity for us to be released from the hinder place that we may apprehend what is on the other side of the promise. As Apostle has been preaching this series, Let the Church Be the Church, there was an apostolic release, an apostolic realignment as we have pivoted and shifted now into what God has already promised for us corporately and individually. And for that to be so, we must go back and get some things. We must wake up from sleeping. Holy we will live and holy we will be. That's the declaration for the church. Holy we will live and holy we will be. Many of you may remember uh, the 513 location. And at 513, as you're walking out, there, there was a sign that says holiness unto the Lord. And on the other side, it said kingdom responsibility. We need to go back to the place of understanding what holiness is and what holiness represents. Going back to, uh, to a place of understanding and declaring that my kingdom responsibility is holiness unto the Lord. I know this isn't popular teaching these days, and I know I'm young, but I grew up in a holiness church. I grew up in a church that always preached holiness, that always preached to live a life for the Lord Jesus Christ. Holiness is not a list of do's and don'ts. Holiness is not wearing certain garments nor refraining from certain social activities. Holiness is loving God and loving God's creation. True holiness, watch this, is contentment with Jesus. We used to sing a song years ago, gain the world, but give me Jesus. And I still make that the declaration on today. I, yes, I do love riches. I, I understand that. But I also love God greater than the riches. So that's why I need God, and I want God more than this whole world can offer. And that has to be the place of understanding for you and for me. That has to be the place that we get back to, that we can be uh, not, not moved so easily when the winds of life begin to blow. That we won't be so easily, amen, sifted when the enemy comes in because we stand on the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Again, true holiness is contentment with Jesus. Unholiness comes from discontentment with Jesus. Thinking some self-indulgence has more to offer than Jesus. But Pastor Eric, it makes me feel so good. That drink makes me feel so good. To hit that one more time, whatever that is, it makes me feel so good. Understand that unholiness comes from discontentment with Jesus. Thinking some self-indulgence has more to offer than Jesus. Anytime we cave into our flesh, we reveal discontentment with Jesus. But walking in the spirit, accessing the power of the Holy Spirit, and he never leads you to indulge in the flesh. Since the works, the works of the flesh are manifest, as it says in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, indulgence in the moral sins of religious sins, relationship sins, or social sins manifest the unholiness of the flesh. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. With all its rich expression, this is true holiness. So what I want us to focus on right now and kind of go back to, we need to go back to long-suffering. We need to go back to gentleness. We need to go back to goodness. We need to go back to faith. We need to go back to meekness. We need to go back to temperance. We have to learn how to wake up the expression of love that is within you. I know they don't deserve your forgiveness, but forgive them anyway. I know they don't deserve you to, to walk with them an extra mile, but walk with them an extra mile anyway. I know they want to hit you. I know they stole from you. It's okay. Love them and allow the fruit of the Spirit to become manifest in your life. But Pastor Eric, that was my husband. That was my wife. That was my child. I understand. But perfect love cast out all fear. And we have to realize that fear is not only a place of me being afraid, but it's also a place of me hiding things from being exposed to the truth of the word of God. And in order for us, amen, to go back and get what belongs to us, to you, to me, we must identify that it is missing in the first place. Self-actualization or self-awareness is a missing component for many people. We tend to settle for what is or what we want and do not realize we are missing out on the true blessing. How many of you want God to bless you? And how many of you believe that God's going to bless you? You want God to bless you with a new home? You want God to bless you with finances? You want God to bless you with a new car? I'm here to let you know not only will God bless you with that, but he'll also bless you with everything else that he wants and that he has prepared for you. But you have to stay in his presence long enough that you can hear his voice in what he's saying. What is the Lord saying to you? I love the Jeffersons. In the Jeffersons, they have that new apartment in the sky. But God does not want that for me. He wants something else for me. So let me stay in his presence long enough that I can hear his voice and respond to what he's saying. Hallelujah. But in order for that to happen, you have to have the honest, courageous conversation. You have to ask the heart questions. And guess what? This conversation is often not with anyone else. This conversation, as Michael Jackson said, is with the man in the mirror. I have to begin to speak to the man in the mirror. You have to begin to speak to the woman in the mirror and begin to speak the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Begin to speak the word of the Lord over that situation. Begin to speak the word of the Lord. Amen. Even on the bed of affliction. So ask the questions. How did I get here? What things did I do to get here? What is needed for me to get out of here? Going back to what I said earlier, we have to stay in his presence long enough to receive all the instructions. We pull out of his presence too quickly because of premature spirituality. We pull out of his presence too quickly because of premature spirituality. Because we think we have arrived. Because we think we have it this time. Or because we think that God has shown you enough. But just stay a little while longer in his presence and let him show you everything. Just stay a little while longer in his presence and let him speak to you thoroughly. Just stay a little while longer, amen, worshiping God and watch what he says to you. 
when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Not I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. Go on and type in the comment section, love. Come on, go on and type that, love, love, love. There should be an evolving of every believer. What I used to do, I don't do anymore. Where I used to go, I don't go anymore. Let us leave the elementary thing and go on to what's next. Come on, someone say, what's next? Amen. Come on, someone say, what's next? In other words, let us become sanctified. Sanctified in my thoughts, sanctified in my actions, sanctified in my relationships. I believe it was about a year ago, Apostle was preaching, and he said we have to ask the Lord to sanctify our imagination. As we ask the Lord to sanctify us, guess what? According to his word, he will sanctify us holy. Hallelujah. Salvation happens immediately, but sanctification occurs in an every day, amen, in every action, and in every situation. Amen. I am on a new relationship journey. I have made a decision to take a righteous stance in my relationship. Even if that costs me the relationship, I am willing to risk it because I am sowing the seed of righteousness. What seeds are you sowing in this season? Come on, what seeds are you planting in this season that it may reap a harvest in the next season? I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how it feels, but you have to plant the seed of righteousness. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is a sanctified church. That means we are loving Jesus and we are loving people. That's sanctification. The seeds we sow in the spirit, we will reap of the spirit. And the seeds we sow in the flesh, we will reap of the flesh. Watch this. Many of you have been promoted to the next grade, but you're still focused on the failures of last year. That test you failed. The times you were in trouble. Yes, it happened. Yes, you failed. Yes, you missed the mark. But I hear God saying that you have been promoted to the next grade. You have been promoted to the next grade. You have been promoted to the next grade. Go on and type in the comment section, a section, promotion. Promotion does not come from, 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 from man, but promotion comes from the Lord, and you have been promoted to the next grade. So stop staying where you are. Stop st uh, uh, staying in the season of yesterday and come to the season of today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time now to come up. Hallelujah. It's time now to wake up. Hallelujah. And as you come up now, and as you wake up now, you begin to break the back of disappointment and the failures and come to the place that God has for you. Break the back of disappointment. Break the back of disobedience. Break the back of sleeping and come up now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have to come up in my spirit, man. I have to come up to the place that God has promised. I have to come up now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on up now, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And as you come up, you also understand and you also know that now you have your joy. As you come up now, you have your peace. As you come up now, you have temperance. As you come up now, you have meekness. As you come up now, you have all that God has promised you. The word of God says in Hebrews 6, Verse number one, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith toward God. So as we go on to perfection, we go on to love. We go on to Christ. Amen. Perfection personified is love and action. Perfection personified is love and action. So can you love your neighbor? Can you bless those who curse you? Can you pray for someone that prayed on you? Perfection personified is love and action. 
I'll never forget one Sunday, we was here in the sanctuary, and it was time for us to have the prayer of agreement. And there was someone that came that wanted prayer, and they came to me, and I had to make sure that I was filled with the Holy Ghost, because what I wanted to say would not have produced the righteousness of God. What I wanted to say was not a loving, kind word, but the Lord who leads us, amen, in every situation will grant us the word that we need to say according to the love that he wants us to give in that moment. So for a moment, I want to talk about an inconsistent tree. Inconsistent trees produce inconsistent fruit. Don't become the cursed tree. The cursed tree produces cursed fruit. There is a Disney princess by the name of Snow White. Snow White was beautiful to those who encountered her. Snow White had a dilemma. Someone say dilemma. Who was that? Nellie and uh, Kelly. Kelly wrote when they sang that song, Dilemma, right? But, but, but this, this, this situation with Snow White, her mother and her father are now dead. She is next to, to get the throne. However, the dilemma comes in because she has an evil, wicked stepmother who was envious of her. We have to learn how to be careful of those who are envious of us because envy can be deadly. Because Snow White's stepmother was working in evil, she cursed the fruit that Snow White was going to eat. In this case, the tree wasn't cursed, but the fruit was cursed in the hands of the wrong person. Stop eating from everyone's table. Be careful of the fruit from the envious people in your life. Metaphorical, metaphorically, excuse me, metaphorically, I'm speaking about of receiving word from all these social media prophets and evangelists. We hear the word, amen, we need to l- uh, listen to the word from our local house. There are opportunities at least four times within KLCM that we are speaking the word of God over you. So you have to be careful about eating from everyone's table. Going into someone's house and it's dirty. Sitting at the table and the spoon is dirty. The fork is dirty. Everything is dirty and you eat anyway. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. You need to go to a clean house. Amen. And eat from a clean table. The word of God says, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Or who can stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. We have to watch, amen, the hands of those that are not clean. We have to wash the hands of those that are trying to feed us and their heart is filled with deceit. It's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy. Don't eat the fruit from that house. Don't eat the fruit from their hand. It may look good to the eye, but it will not be good to your soul. As you know the story of Snow White, Snow White took a bite of that apple, and guess what happened to Snow White? She became cursed because she ate the fruit of the evil worker. It was not until, it was not until the prince came and kissed Snow White to wake Snow White up. I'm here to let you know. The Prince of Peace is here to kiss you this morning and to wake you up. I'm here to let you know you ate from the tree that was cursed, but the Lord Jesus Christ is moving in your direction to wake you up. Come on, Zion. Hallelujah. Come on, Zion. No longer will you eat the tree or from the tree that was cursed. Hallelujah. The Prince is here to kiss you. The prince is here to kiss you. He he does not want to leave you like you are. He does not want to leave you in a situation that makes you feel like you got to run all your life. You can stop running now and wake on up. You can stop fighting now and wake on up. You can stop hiding now and wake up because the prince of peace is here for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, Come on, slip your hands up wherever you are and respond to the presence of God. Come on, lift your hands up and respond to the presence of God. Hallelujah, let him kiss on you right now. Hallelujah, let him begin to kiss on you right now. You can't talk about loving God and God not responding to you. Come on, come on, receive from the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Let him kiss on you. Come on. Let him, let, allow him to wake you up this morning. Hallelujah. Allow him to speak to your situation. Allow him to speak to your circumstance. Hallelujah. Allow him to speak in the midst of those that don't like it, that he can bless you and lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, many of you are saying that you never received that revelation about Snow White. I believe that they adopted that from the book of beginnings. Eve was deceived by the serpent. The tree was not cursed, amen, that Eve ate from. But because Eve took it out of deceit from the enemy, she, hallelujah, she was deceived by the enemy. She was deceived by what looked good, and it brought on so much other things that they wasn't even aware of. Everything that looks good is not good for you to eat. I love eating bacon. That's many of you all by itself. But too much bacon is not good for your cholesterol. So you got to learn how, and hear me in the spirit, you have to learn how to, to, to do things in, in, in moderation. You have to learn how to be sensitive because there are some times the Lord's going to call you away from eating certain things. There are some times the Lord's going to call you away from being around certain people. There are some times the Lord's going to allow you to come to a place of being silent and still in his presence that you may receive all from him. Let your confidence be in Christ. And stop entertaining those who are still operating in past seasons with past fruit. Stop entertaining those who are still operating in past seasons with past fruit. That was good on yesterday. And I bless God for that on yesterday. But today's a new day. When the Bible says that this is the day the Lord has made, I have to make that declaration every day when I wake up that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice in today and be glad in it. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what the next hour looks like, but I will lift my hands and rejoice. I'll lift my hands and thank God. I'll lift my voice, amen, and give praises to him because this is the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment, huh, hallelujah, for the moment when we will be saved is closer now than it was when we first believed. The night is nearly over. Day is almost here. Let us stop doing the things that belong to the dark. And let us take up the weapons for fighting in the light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as people who live in the light of day. No orgies or drunkenness, no immorality or indecency, no fighting, no jealousy. But take up the weapons of the Lord Jesus Christ and stop paying attention to, the, uh, to your sinful nature and satisfying its desires. I'm almost finished. And there are a few points that I want to make, amen, before I close this sermon. Number one, I'm not just saved in this world. I'm saved from this world. I'm not just saved in this world. I'm saved from this world. We have to come to a place of realizing that salvation brings me in my relationship with Jesus Christ, not only here in the earth, but also in heaven. When the trumpet sounds. When my name is called, I'm saved. Going back to my early days, we sang the song that said, I'm saved. I'm sanctified. I'm a Holy Ghost filled, and I'm fire baptized. I got the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost got me. I bless God for that because that taught me how to live a saved life as a young boy. Now, living a saved life, it does not mean I'm going to dot every I. Living a saved life, it does not mean that I'm going to cross every T. But what it does mean, that my big brother, Jesus Christ, he has my back. What it does mean, when I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he is with me. The rod and the staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. 
Jesus Christ is with you. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, he's with you. Whatever you say, he's with you. Hallelujah. Number two, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. There's a translation that says it's high time. Someone say high time. Because we know the danger of the times, we anticipate the soon return of Jesus. We should be all the more energetic and committed to a right walk with God instead of a sleepwalk with God. How important it is to awake out of sleep. It is possible to do many, it is possible to do many Christian things and yet essentially be asleep towards God. Sometimes people talk in their sleep. Sometimes people hear things in their sleep. Sometimes people walk in their sleep. Sometimes people sing in their sleep. Sometimes people think in their sleep. We call it dreaming. I remember when I was a young child, my mother used to tell me that she could always tell when I had a bad day because I would talk in my sleep. I also remember one time that they said that I was walking in my sleep. I don't remember that. I don't remember walking in my sleep. I don't remember talking in my sleep. But what I do know, even though I was asleep, my body was awake. Even though I was not aware of what was going on around me, there was movement that was happening. And because, watch this, because one, because one can do many religious things and still be slipped toward God, it is important for every believer to make sure they are truly awake and active in their life before God. Put your hand on yourself and say, wake up. Come on, type in the comment section and say, wake up. I know you're working in ministry and God bless you. I know you're giving and God bless you, but you can do all those things and still be asleep toward God. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hallelujah. Yeah, it has been said, and the term has been coined that we are woke. Woke because people get it. I am convinced that being woke has everything to do with a spiritual revelation being manifested through the love of Christ on the earth. I'm believing, amen, that God is going to wake us up as the body of Christ, that we can take our rightful place that we can be the true sons and the true daughters of God that he has designed and desired. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. The illustration is the illustration is from taking off and putting on clothes. When you get dressed every day, you dress appropriately to who you are and what you plan to do. When I go to the gym, I put on some basketball shorts, a t-shirt and some sneakers. When I go to work, I put on a pair of slacks, a pair of nice shoes, and a polo, sometimes a button-up, and sometimes a jacket. But I dress appropriately for where I'm going to go. Therefore, every day, we have to learn to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I have to learn to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So as I'm putting on my shoes, God, I put you on. As I pull up my pants, God, I put you on. Why? Because I need the word of God in every area of my life. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. We have to do this. There are things that we have to cast off. Bitterness, cast it off. Jealousy, cast it off. Envy, cast it off. There's a saying that says this. The rags of sin must come off. And we put on the robe of Christ. There must be a taking away of the love of sin. There must be a renouncing of the practices and habits of sin. Or else a man cannot be a believer. It will be an idle attempt to try to wear religion as a sort of celestial overall over the top of old sins. So in essence, what we do, we try to put new wine in old wineskins can't do that. New wine, new wineskins. Hallelujah. The works of darkness, and we have to talk about it, because every work of darkness, um, it, it, it's not those sexual sins only. It can also be gossip, right? It can also be deceit. It can also be, watch this, being petty. 
because many of us have become masters of being petty. And we think it's okay. The devil is a liar. It's an act of immaturity. Come on up now and stop being ignorant. These are not appropriate for Christians who have come out of the night into God's light. The idea behind, you know, when you talk about what rivalry and drunkenness and lust and strife, you know, and, and I went back and forth with this, but I do believe, and if there's, if there's kids in here, hold their ears. If they're watching, you know, you may want to mute this part. But what we have to do is not allow premature spiritual ejaculation to be released into the earth. Because when that begins to happen, there's a mess that's going on. There are things that are happening that should not happen right now. And wait a minute, here comes Ishmael. Here comes Ishmael because I prematurely did something that I was not supposed to do. It was the right thing, but at the wrong time with the wrong person. Now, God's going to bless Ishmael because God is true to his word. But the, the word of God says to put the bottom woman and her son out. That was a place of revelation. There are things that we have to learn to cast off or cast away. This is, to, I struggle, Bishop. I struggle, and I said to the Lord, Lord, I believe this is a hard word, but the Lord said you have to say it, and, and it's because we have to be the church. As we become the church, we are a mature people. As we become the church, we, we, we do put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. So that means, you know what, you can walk in ignorance all day, you, all day, every day, every moment, but I'm not going to. You can go there all day, every day, but I'm not going to. You can say that all day, every day, but I'm not going to. Why? Because I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm intentional about what I put on. I'm intentional about the words that I say. I'm intentional about the places that I go. Wake up, Zion, and put on your strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're struggling now because you have not waken up yet. You are struggling now because you have not learned the Lord Jesus Christ. Still struggling with tithing. Still struggling with giving. The devil is a liar. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. I'm almost finished. The armor of light. This is related to the Lord Jesus Christ himself. When we put on Christ, we put on all the armor of God and are equipped to both defend and attack. I'm equipped to both defend and attack. Putting on Christ is a strong and vivid metaphor. It means more than put on the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, signifying rather let Jesus Christ himself be, be the armor that you wear. Make no provision for the flesh. The flesh will be as active as we allow it to be. We have, to, we have work to do and walking properly as in the day. It isn't as if Jesus does not, or does rather, does it for us as we sit back. Instead, he does it through us as we willingly and actively partner with him. This is why you have to make the declaration. You have to live the life. You have to walk the walk. You have to be an active partner with the Lord Jesus Christ. So God used this in Romans 13 to speak and show Augustine, the great theologian of the early church, that he really could live the Christian life as empowered by the Holy Ghost. He just had to do it as so do we. You can live this life. You can be a true believer. You can cast off the flesh. Amen. You can put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can walk in love. You can walk in the Lord. The Bible says in closing, Psalms 27 and 1, the Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I want you to know that as you put on light, you're putting on Jesus Christ and salvation in every situation that you and I may walk into. This is your moment not to walk in darkness anymore but to escape it and walk where God wants you to walk. Becoming the church is becoming the Lord Jesus Christ. Becoming the church 
It means that I leave the elementary principles behind and I go on to perfection. It means that I'm waking up now. It means that my promotion is here. Amen. And because my promotion is here, I'm ready to walk through the door. I'm ready to walk to the next grade. I'm ready to walk to the place that God has promised me. I'm ready to walk, amen, to to another level and another dimension in God. It does not mean that I'm going to pass every test in this season. It does not mean I'm going to pass every test, amen, in this grade. But it does mean that where he leads me, I'll follow. It does mean that as he takes my hand, I'll go where he wants me to go. Listen to what Paul said to Timothy. He says, therefore, I remind you, Timothy, I remind you, Jadora, I remind you, Tanya, I remind you, Daniel, I remind, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of hands. Stir up the gift of God that is within you by the laying on of hands. Stir up the gift of God that's in you by the laying on of hands. You have been prepared for this season. You have been blessed for this season. And now it's time for you to wake up. Now it's time for you to come to the place that God is calling you to come into. But right after that, in verse number 7, it says, For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I'm here to declare to you this morning that it's high time. I'm here to declare to you this morning it's time for you to wake up. I'm here to declare to you this morning that you need to move now. There's mobility in your feet now. There is an acceleration in the spirit now. And it's up to you to respond to what God is doing. The wind blows where it wants to. We have no control of where the wind blows, but all we can do is begin to say yes to the Lord. We have no control of the wind blowing in the east or the wind blowing in the west, but all we can do is say yes to the Lord. So I want you in your homes. I want you in the sanctuary. I want you in your car to be careful, but I want you now to begin to lay hands on yourself and to begin to stir up every gift. Every gift, every gift, every gift, every gift, stir it up now. Every gift, stir it up now. Every gift, stir it up now. It's the season for you and I to be the church. And for us to be the church, we have to manifest as the sons of God. We have to manifest as the daughters of God. We have to manifest and be the church of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gift of prophecy, stir it up. The gift of exhortation, stir it up. The gift of healing, stir it up. The gift of hearing, stir it up. The gift of speaking, stir it up. The gift of giving, stir it up. It's high time. It's high time. Wake up and stir up the gift that's within you. God bless you. Amen. And may heaven smile upon you.
that there are many people out here today that have become professional Christians. They have become professional Christians. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke clearly this morning when he said, that your tithe is a tenth of your earth. You are giving as you are giving as unto the Lord. So if today is if today is your, if, if today is your day, if this week is your week, make sure that you follow the directions on the bottom of the screen. You can text me here. You can go to our website in here. You can call in. You can stop by the you can stop by our campus and drop it off. But whatever you do, don't you hold on to your seed. I need you to make sure you plant your seed in good ground today. And the same goes for our offering. Those of you that are citizens of King's Life, you already know, hallelujah, what we are asking of you to do. I, I, I dare 
you to stretch yourself this morning. Go above and beyond. Come up. As Pastor Eric said, it's time for us to come up. Come up this morning. Let's challenge ourselves to do more than what we normally would do. Hallelujah. We give God glory. We give God honor. And we give God praise. Hallelujah. If you lift, if you believe, if you heard that word this morning and you know it's time for you to wake up, I need you to lift your hands right where you are. If you join this morning, we welcome you. Hallelujah. Welcome to the family. If you rededicated your life, welcome. Hallelujah. And we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Come on, royal priesthood. Lift that up. Hallelujah. And we honor you. about you. I don't know about you, but I've been so richly blessed by the presence of Almighty God. I've been so blessed because God has been so, so very good to us. He's a great God, worthy of all praise, glory, and honor. I love the Lord. I bless God for what he has done for us and what he's doing in the midst of his people. Weren't you blessed by the word today? The word of the living God met us today. I don't know about you. It was a rich word. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Eric, for hearing the heart of God for us. Hallelujah. We bless God for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Tremendous gift and what a powerful word of a, a strong apostolic prophetic word to the house of the Lord. Let the church be the church. Let the church be the church. Holy we will be, righteous we will live, we will walk in kingdom power. Listen, if you were blessed by the word, let's bless our executive pastor, amen? Sow a seed, amen, amen. You can give, amen, online. And it says, it said where it says other, or uh, give there, and it's going to, you want to bless our man of God. Listen, we bless gifts, Amen. We take time to sow into the word of the living God. Amen. I'm grateful for what God is doing in the midst of the citizens of Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries. Listen, I want to share with you something very special. Um, it goes right in line with uh, the word that our pastor shared with us this morning. Some weeks ago, the Lord kind of stirred my heart and mind and reminded me something that he had given me some months ago. It was an idea. I thought it was a, a sterling idea. Then indeed I realized it was a God idea. Something that God wants uh, you and I to do. And he spoke to me. It's called Blessing 828. Blessing 828. What is Blessing 828? Blessing 828 is an opportunity for us to sow seed into what God is doing in the midst of this congregation. The Lord spoke to me and reminded me of our Rise campaign. And we did well as a congregation, as a family. And we didn't reach our goal. And God really wants us to, 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 to fulfill what he's given us to do. There are some things that we have to do. Even while we're in this pandemic, ministry is still going on. We still have some things to do. We want to improve technology. We want to prepare and move to the next level in our building program. When we back up and talk about technology, there are some things that we need to do that we can enhance our verse of worship. There are some cameras that we need. There are some things that we need to do in the sanctuary. And the Lord spoke to me and gave me this idea. And he said, Sterling, I want you every person that you're friends with on Facebook to sow an $8 seed. 
dollars on August 28th. I said, ask every member to ask all of their friends and families on Facebook to sow eight dollars. They can give more, but at least eight dollars. Somebody said, Well, I'm, I'm not on Facebook that much. All your friends in your text chains, send them a text message. We're going to give you some information, send some email, give you a script. You might even want to do an own vi- your own video. But we're believing God to do what he said on, on August 28th. Blessing 828. It's based on Romans 828. And we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God. To them that are called according to his purpose. Listen, on that on that August 28th, we're meeting here with our intercessors, and we're going to have a time of celebration and intercession. It's going to be open to everyone. So it's going to be a Facebook Live intercessory time of worship and intercessory prayer, praying for the need. God is indeed shifting something. Listen, this has been a powerful time of worship today. When Elder Ikea began to exalt us in worship, and she began to talk about uh, God doing some things in the region, I had just prayed a prayer because a lot of times during the worship, I feel the need to release apostolically and to speak to the region. I began to speak to this region, and what I prayed, I feel led to share with you. My prayer was, Lord, unblock the of the flow that your river can flow into the lives of your people everywhere because what I felt that there was a blockage but I also felt this morning that God began to remove the blockage that the river of life was going to flow into your homes into your families into our neighborhoods into the eastern panhandle into this region God is going to move mightily. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the shift is already happening. We are already in the move of God. Something big is happening for you and your family, and I want you to be a part of it. You know how you partner with God? It's by getting into what God is doing. Blessing 828 is what God is doing. So what, what, you, what, you, what I want you to do, begin to think now. How, how, how are you going to do it? Are you going to send a text? Are you going to to post something on Facebook to remind your friends? Are you going to call some of them? Whatever you got to do, I want you to do it. Well, Bishop, some of my friends are friends that are people in the church. It's okay. You can tell them. If someone already asked you to sow, it's okay. We just want you to share. We're believing God for a tremendous move in his spirit, even as he begins to move as we sow. Amen. Blessing 828. Our intercessors are already praying for a mighty move and manifestation of God on that day. I'm believing God. Listen, I'm believing that I'll have a thousand friends. First Lady and I are believing God that a thousand of our friends on Facebook will sow eight dollars. If a thousand of my friends sow eight dollars, how much is that? Eight thousand dollars. I'm believing God for that. Will you believe it with me? Hallelujah. Listen, I we shared the idea with Chief Apostle Blumick Baltimore. He already didn't even wait for the 828. He said, here is my seed. He sold more than the $8 to say I'm a part of what you're doing. Other people who heard about it who said, Bishop, count me in. I'm counting on you, Kingdom Life citizens, to do your part in sharing in this. It's kingdom building, and I'm excited. Listen. I want you to have a tremendous week in the spirit. I'm believing God to do great things for you. I'm believing for the blessings of the Lord to overtake your life. I'm excited about what God has in store for you. I'm believing God to do some tremendous things in your life. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Be strengthened. Don't forget to join us on this Wednesday night. Amen. Hour of power is being powerful. You don't want to miss Hebrews chapter 4. As we talk about entering into the rest, the promise of God. Amen. We love you. Amen. Is that it? No, sir. So for many of you, thank you so much for your uh, time of celebration. 
as we celebrated the life of Apostle Sterling. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a moment and pause, amen, and I'm going to turn it over, and uh, we have someone giving a great presentation to our lead pastor. said to someone this morning coming in the building, I've been crying all, I told Elder, it was Elder Ikea, I've been crying, and, and, and Brother Mickey, I've been crying all weekend, crying all weekend, because of the amazing love that has been extended to me. I don't know, I'm getting, I must be getting mushier in my older age, but I sit down and think about such great people that God has allowed me to share with. of the Lord be returned to you like a thousand times more. I'm going to go home and I'm going to cry some more. I'm not going to let you see me shed any tears on camera. Hallelujah. But listen, God is up to something. Our executive pastor shared something with me early, early, early this morning. And it's a word. share about our blessing in gate 28. I'm going to let you in on something. Some of you heard me, have heard me say it, but some of you may not have. If the Lord says to say, somewhere around, around the month of January, there is a strong, strong, strong possibility that Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries will begin a national television ministry. It's a fulfillment of prophecy by little sister Heather some years ago who stood there with and said to me, Bishop, I see you on television. A few weeks after that, Elder, Elder Deborah Sampson came and said, Bishop, I see a television ministry coming. Well, my 
brothers and sisters, it's coming to pass. Amen. And so as we share together, Blessing 828 helps us to prepare for that. I love you. I'm praying for you. May the all, God of all peace be with you as you walk in his blessings this week. Remember, it's your moment in time. Live the kingdom life. God bless you. The mission of Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries is to fulfill God's purpose and to extend His kingdom to birth a people of purpose, passion, and power for the transformation of the world. People that are committed to God, that celebrate one another, and cultivate their community. Do you need prayer? Do you desire someone to stand with you and agree with you? Look no further. We have eye prayer available for you on Sunday between 9 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Our elders and ministers are there for anyone in need. You can dial in or connect via Zoom. The dial-in number is on this flyer, and the Zoom link is posted in the description of the live broadcast. Next Sunday at 9 a.m., meet us right here in the parking lot of KLCM for another Park and Praise service. We want everyone who can to come, and let's worship God together. Attention women. Please join us tomorrow for the Monday Ministry Moment. We are looking for all the women of KLCM, female friends, and followers to join us on Zoom at 7 p.m. Motivational speaker Frida Doxy will be delivering a word from the Lord that you don't want to miss. Please check our KLCM Facebook page for the meeting link. Are you up early in the mornings? then please join the KLCM prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. and be led in prayer by our very own Apostle Sterling Porter. All you need to do is dial in to the conference call number and enter the access code. The number is 712-770-4010 and the access code is 645-162. Please join us for our Hour Power Teaching Series a Better Way, A Better Life, The Study of the Book of Hebrews, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Apostle Sterling Porter will go live right from Facebook. This is a series you don't want to miss. Also at 7 p.m., our children's ministry will have their own teaching live on YouTube with Elder Akio Wilson. To find our YouTube page, go to youtube.com or open the app and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and look for our logo. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our page. We encourage everyone to join us for an awesome time in God's Word. On Thursday at 7 p.m., Elder Ralph Wilson will go live on Zoom for our youth Bible study. The Zoom link will be posted on our Facebook page. This is primarily for the 13 to 18 year old age group. We ask that all adults, unless you're a parent of one of our teens, not to join the live stream. We want to ensure that our teens have every opportunity to interact with their teacher. We appreciate your understanding. Through the month of August, we will continue to have daily check-ins with our KLCM citizens. Check-ins will only take place on Fridays at 7 p.m. We will go live right from our Facebook page. You will continue to receive a word of encouragement as well as a word of prayer. We are looking for all our members to plug in and let us know how you're doing. Even though we are not meeting together physically, we still need and are looking for you to be faithful in your tithing offering. We have five ways available for you to give. You can download the Give Plus app, search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries, and follow the instructions. Text to Give is also now available. Just send a text to 304 398-6627 with your giving amount, then hashtag tithe, offering, building, speaker, or pastor, and then click send. It's that easy. Note, if it's your first time, you'll be prompted to create an account. You can also give online at www.kingdomlifecathedral.org and scroll until you see the online giving banner. You can also give via the mail, sending it right to our P.O. Box. That information should include KLCM, 
P.O. Box 967, Ranson, West Virginia, 25438. And finally, you can bring it to the church and give during our Park and Pray services. Miss the announcements? Don't worry, you can watch the replay of this service or head to our YouTube page and watch the announcements there. Thank you for your attention during the announcements. Remember, it's your moment of time. Live the kingdom life.